All right, so I'm going to be attempting to show how to replace the little piece on this ZIF or zero insertion, zero insertion force connector. I had a customer that broke this off and needed it to go back on. The thing is usually these things are so tiny that you're just gonna end up losing them, but uh, we'll see. All right, so here we go. We have the connector here. I'm gonna zoom in a lot. It helps to have good tweezers. I'm going to try with these <coughs> flat tweezers here, okay? And I don't know if I can get a good view. That looks pretty good. Okay, so first things first, you obviously have to get the little piece, and you can see it has like these little holes in there, okay? You have to grab onto that with some tweezers on the solid portion. And then you want to take a look because um, there's two sides to this thing, all right? And one side, the plastic goes um, further down. The other side, it goes kind of further up. And if I remember correctly, the part that actually is kind of further down is going to have to be the side that flips this way. So basically, we have the thing. It's going to have to go in like straight that way to go back on. And then when you latch it, the part that's there, um, basically the part that's lower goes down here. So when you flip it, it pries up these little pins here. And then that's what makes it um, teeter-totter to make contact with the connector there. So let's see if we can get this in. The customer might have messed it up trying to fix it themselves, but let's see. Okay, so we're going to try and get this. On, line it up and get that in. All right, and as you can see, we were able to get that on. You do want to be careful because those are metal pins. You don't want to touch it with the metal tweezers and then fry something. So once we get that on, we should be able to. You just slide your finger over. Don't try and like push it like that. You want to just slide your finger over to latch it down. So just like this, and there you go. You can see it latched into place. Hopefully, it's lined up properly and will work. Let's do a test. We're going to try and turn this thing on. I don't know if the customer disconnected anything else and damaged it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to try and plug the charger in. Did this one? Oh, this one uses the new type of charger. They didn't give me the charger, so I have no way to plug that back in and check because I don't have a new one of these really new MacBook chargers. Um, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't accept USB-C charging. So, um, yeah, I'm probably going to have to give it back to the customer, let them test, make sure everything's okay. Um, but I think that should be correct. You can actually see the adhesive residue that used to be on top there. So it should be the right way. Again, um, the part that is kind of, so the connector has like all those holes in it. And then one part is kind of shaved down so that it's like further down here. And then that part is what goes underneath. So you would slap it on that way. And then when you pull it down, it goes that way. So again, the customer will need to have their charger to plug it in. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully that helped you with figuring out how to fix those zero insertion force connectors. Um, if you did put it in the wrong way, you could always flip the latch back up. So you kind of just get in there. I just use my fingernail, flip that back up as you can, oops, as you can see, I just flip that thing straight up. Then you can kind of just grab it, pull that back off and then flip it around and then put it back on. And hopefully that'll work. Anyways, again, just slide your finger over it. Don't try and use a tool to like latch it down or um, your fingernail don't like flick it. You just want to, again, slide your finger over. Okay. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Let's drop this. Bye.